Hey everybody and welcome to the YouTube channel or the Patreon, it depends on where you are right now. Uh, this is an old video that I recorded some years ago and I have re-uploaded re it and uh, redated it as well uh, to improve a bit the image quality and the, the sound, especially the sound. This is something that I'm doing right now, I'm sharing the old content of my Patreon, content with two or three years. Uh, focus mostly in, in war game content, more fundamental or intermediate content, uh, because I want to share it with the community and well, to to, uh, to add something uh, to, to it. So, uh, well, I will be uploading more videos in the future. I hope this one will uh, like you, we will enjoy the, the process. Remember that if you want to support me, I'm on Patreon. I have a Patreon where I'm uh, creating a lot of content, great content as well, uh, better content than this one because it's, it's newer and I'm a better recorder uh, right now, I'm a better editor. Um, and if not, uh, just subscribe to the YouTube channel. I will be very uh, thankful uh, for that and comment your doubts if you have anyone because I will answer as soon as possible. Uh, no, nothing more. I leave you with the video and thank you for following and thank you for uh, being there. Bye bye and enjoy. Well, this is the model and this is primed in, in black and white, as you see, because the, the darkest parts or the, the gray parts that remains after applying the, the white base coat from above with the spray, as you see. Uh, will be more brighter when we ap we apply the the contrast paints. And well, I'm using these contrast pa these contrast paints because uh, we they will make the the process faster. Uh, I'm going to use them as a base coat layers, and as you see, this is a very easy st step. Use a big brush like uh, I did in the Space Marine with contrast and just cover the, all the parts with the colors that you desire. As you see there in the lower parts that are darker because they are not covered uh, with white, uh, the blue is looking more dark. Now I'm going to use this red, same way than with the blue. Base coat to the parts of the miniature that I want to be red, in this case the shoulder pad. And with this um, uh, English uniform, I paint the base coat from the golden parts. Also mixing these two colors, uh, I create the gray for the for the metal parts. There, there was uh, there were black and and some kind of uh, space wolf gray, and with this uh, white of white, I paint the remaining parts of the solar parts. Okay, as you see, all of the parts of the miniature are painted, so now we know if the scheme is working or not. In this case, it's working. At least for me, it's a beautiful scheme for the for the Imperial Knight. Um, now you can see that the figure have a lot of detail, uh, and, and actually, part of this detail is inside the, the figure, like like you see in the in the lower part. And to improve the definition of the figure, um, I'm going to apply, or we are going to apply, uh, a wash using these shades that are uh, Null Oil and Agrax Earth Shade, which are really are uh, a dark brown when I mix them. And I'm going to apply this in all the inside part of the figure, like the metal, the gray parts, and the weapon. Um, as you see, this is the dark brown, very dark brown, and with this color and a big brush, apply it in all the surface that uh, have to be uh, gray, no metallic, uh, metal gray. As you see, I'm very rough. I'm not taking any care with that. I just apply it in the in the um, uh, golden parts of the figure but not in the blue parts or the red or white parts. Well, the figure is, uh, the shade is applied and you have to wait to dry because it's, if not, it's going to mix with the next uh, coat. And we are going to uh, apply now the first lights over the, the surface. I'm going to use this steel gray from Game Color, but you can use any other neutral gray uh, uh, with a bit of yellow. And 
as we have done uh, many times in other videos we are going to place the lights or in this case the medium tones or the medium lights uh, in the figure taking into consideration that we are applying like a, a zenithal light in the upper parts of every uh, every metal or gray metal part as you see i'm very rough i'm not worried about uh, the blending or if it looks smooth or not and i cover mostly um, all the upper part of the different uh, areas that's because we have to apply another light more uh, later probably you think that uh, the inner parts of the figure are too dark uh, to be painted like this but not you are wrong because you are going to apply later um, um, at least one or even two more lights so you need to paint the, the inner parts in this medium tone to give them a bit of luminosity if not they will uh, look like uh, black uh, and confusing black from the distance well all the parts of uh, gray non-metallic are covered now and the next step is to uh, apply a new layer of uh, light this is the the previous color the first color that we have applied in the in the figure this is the second color okay and now mixing with white the, this is the third the third color as you see more clear more bright that we are going to apply in the figure once again we are uh, covering placing the lights in the upper part of the figure in the in the areas where uh, we have applied before the medium tone but now uh, we want to cover just uh, a bit uh, so we are leaving part of the previous step of the color obviously in the inner parts i'm not going to apply this color except maybe for uh, outlining or or to add small spots but uh, in the outer parts like the sword the the knee the the weapon etc we are covering part of the a great part i mean of the previous color i usually have changed my brush because in this stage i need to be more precise even there are some parts of the figure like this one of the leg which is a uh, curve that you have to draw the outlining because uh, the reduction reduction of the of the scale of the bigger one uh, imperial knight to this tiny titan um <clears throat> have changed a bit the the detail and some parts are difficult to uh, outline just using the edge so you have to draw it as you have said before there are <clears throat> areas in the inner part that just with this color we we can outline the the edges because they are in a dark part of the figure so we are not going to use a, a more bright color to to line because it have no, no no sense because the outer parts that uh, are going to use uh, more near to white color so now uh, the gray is done at least at uh, this part but uh, we need another step more and this step is that we are going to use again the, the shade with the dark brown that we have created before because we want to add a bit more of detail of definition <clears throat> in these parts but now we are applying it with more care with a smaller brush as you see i'm still using the the size one and i place the the shade just in the area that i that are more confusing and has more detail the figure is very very cool but it's true that it's a figure that is designed to be more big so when they uh, reduce part of the details are too much maybe and create some confusing look on the on the figure but with this shade look at this part for example this is the kind of part that i'm more more interested in because adding the shade I'm adding detail. I'm like outlining the shadow part of the figure. We can do it with inks, but it's more slower, and we are not interested in in be slow in this process. And now with pure white, not pure white. This is enough white. This is a, a scroll white. In, uh, actually, I'm adding final lights or final final outlining in the in the figure.
as you see now the figure from the distance is visible and this is the part of the metallic uh, the gray metallic and this is what we are looking for a figure that we can look from two meters and look to be defined and and pops over the battlefield and with the the model or the figure in this state uh, we are uh, approaching now the the blue the blue part i'm using this medium blue from model color uh, again you can use any other blue that you find uh, in your <laughs> in your paint rack and I'm going to mix it with the yellow, ice yellow. I want to create some kind of uh, turquoise to the light of the blue. Look how it looks, it's very beautiful color. So it doesn't mind if it turns turquoise uh, adding the, the ice yellow and also it gives me more uh, bright to the, to the color. So I'm building the light color using the ice yellow and at the same time I'm creating the turquoise that I want <clears throat> to illuminate or to add light to this part uh, as it has a curved form I'm adding the light in the lower part of the this uh, small shield and if you see the direction of my brush stroke is always in the uh, it finishes in the part of the figure that I want to uh, add light or I, I want to illuminate. Same thing in the in the leg. It's a cylinder, so the medium part that is more exposed is more uh, more clear, more bright. Once again, look at the direction of the brush stroke, and if there are cuts in the transition, it doesn't matter because we can fix it later. This part of the knee is very small, but you can try to add a bit more of light in the upper part. And for, for the parts that are in the inner part, I am taking a more dark blue, like the blue that is in the in the bottle. <clears throat> and I am applying it uh, directly, like in this, this piece of armor, because this is too dark to, to be painted in the in the previous blue. And now, after applying this blue, I can uh, add a bit of uh, light. Same, same thing in the in the chest armor, uh, chest or something like like chest. <clears throat> in this case, I need a more dark blue, even more dark than the one that comes from the bottle. So I mix it with uh, black, and I recover part of the color. Uh, in the sword, I'm going uh, in, di in this direction with a clear blue. I'm adding more ice yellow, so it looks more uh, turquoise, but it's very beautiful color. And I use it to uh, paint this plane of light. And also with this color, even I can uh, outline some parts of the figure, or maybe I boost the lights in some areas, uh, like the uh, the armor plate that is over the head. Look the direction of the light again because it's curved. So I uh, finish my brush stroke in the in the area with more light. Sorry. <laughs> the lower part of the small shield. And the transition is too uh, obvious. You can use uh, a bit of water to blend before it dries. And the upper part of the body armor, which is like is divided in three parts. Look, three curved parts. Uh, <clears throat> I'm placing the lights here, here. And also in the mid part here. I'm doing it this way so you can see it uh, better. But now the process is the same. I take my my mix of color and I trace. I do my brush strokes in this direction because I want to accumulate the pigment in the end of the 
of the stroke in this part. In the medium part, I'm doing like a cross hatching, something that like uh, something that Alfonso did in many of his process, but it's like uh, accumulate the the color in the in the mid part. Now with a bit of blue, medium blue, I can boost the the shadow parts uh, using glazes, and with more dark blue. In this case, it's a blue that we have used before, um, mixed with black. I can uh, sorry for that. I can paint these parts that are more da more darker than the others, or that are uh, planes of shadows. I mean parts of the figure that are out of light or that I'm more interested in to be dark because they define the, the figure. This is something that we have uh, talked about in the, in the Infinity Invincible process. I'm outlining here the, the separation of the plates with this dark blue. And here I'm adding a bit more of light. Look at the brush stroke. This is again a, like a uh, cross hatching, which means that I'm accumulating the pigment from the outer part to the mid part to add a level more of uh, contrast. I don't need to reach the end of the body armor. I can uh, end my brush stroke here, so I boost the sensation of uh, spheric or curve armor. Uh, you can see I have many blues and, and I change it between blues to add more contrast in different areas but I'm not always adding uh, the more light blue in all the areas and the more dark blue in all the areas I choose between the different blues the feet are very easy to do as you see I just paint the, the upper part because they are going to be dirt with the with the base pigments and now it's time to smooth a bit the the cuts that we, we have created while applying the lights and the mid-tones, especially in the legs. And I choose a, a blue between both colors that we have the mixtures in the in the web palette, so it's easy to find. And with a medium high dilution, I use point in these cuts. Uh, well, now I'm going to add a bit of uh, white, this scroll white really, to the, the more uh, bright mixture that we have and it is, it is to outline the blue, um, just in a small, a small uh, areas of the, of the figure, like the edges or the different parts, this is to define and to add a, a last level of contrast. So don't forget to align everything. Also, we can use this uh, color to align the inner part of the plates that they have not, uh, they, they don't have edges, but this is a method that we have used in the Noise Spain Marine and it's very particular from Game Workshop style. Uh, it helps to, to add more definition to the to the model and in this case is uh, welcome because uh, as I have said it has a lot of detail as you see from the distance again we are looking at the figure and the grey is visible the blue is visible from the distance we will add later more detail and we still need to outline the figure in the in shadow parts uh, the, the shadow outlining but without this even without, without this uh, the figure is looking great now it's, it's time for the golden parts. Remember that I have used this uniform English uniform uh, color and I'm adding this uh, gold brown and this ice yellow to finish the, the logical transition of colors in the, in the mixture from the golden parts. <clears throat> so uh, after applying the base coat, the base coat of English uniform, I'm mixing a bit more uh, a bit of this English uniform with the gold brown because I don't want to apply pure gold brown now. This is the color that I have been using now. And as always, uh, with this color and in a very rough way, I'm applying the lights over the different parts of the, of the figure. Remember that this color is a medium tone color, so we can apply it in, in many, many areas. We don't need to be very uh, precise or, or specific 
we can cover mostly all all the parts of the of the gold part. For some areas like this, we can paint in the following the same volumetry or illumination um, scheme that we have used in the blue. I'm not going to paint the feet because uh, they will be covered with the, the base. Um, so it has no sense to waste time with, with that. And now uh, I'm mixing this gold brown with ice yellow to obtain a mid tone between these, these two colors. And I use this color to apply a, a, a light, a new light. I, uh, in this case, I'm not covering all the parts like uh, in the previous uh, step. Obviously, now I'm covering just uh, light parts, like this lower part of the seal, for example, or the braid that I have added in the upper part of the head. And it's the same in, in, in all the all the golden parts. Add brights, following the overall scheme of uh, volumetry of illumination. We can outline in this part uh, some of the edges because it will helps uh, it will help to to us uh, to see the result or if we're going in in a right way. Don't forget to paint the um, the ornaments of the shoulder part or, or the legs. As you see here, adding the right and then uh, outlining. I boost the effect of the bright, and this is because uh, when the, the this happened, the eye, our eye, interpreted that this is a bright that travels to in the edge of the of the part, and is more believable than just uh, apply a light without uh, outlining. And that is because I'm saying that you can outline now some parts of the process while painting the the brights. Adding a bit more of ice yellow, I have another color no, uh, more, a uh, brighter one, and as you see, I'm adding again more bright. In this stage, where you are using clear, not clear, but more uh, brighter colors, <clears throat> you will see that applying two layers of the same color uh, results in two different colors, and this is because uh, the dilution of the color and the, the coverage or the clear colors uh, affects to the the perception of the of the color you are applying because you are applying just a bit of the color but not the full color and this is because it's diluted and that is because it's a clear uh, a bright color that uh, is not covering as well as a darker one and finally, the next step is to outline with pure ice yellow, but we will do in the next video.